A body was fished out of the Seine last night. Straightforward suicide. He's hardly a first corpse. Hardly. But you know, Georges, however many times you meet it, death remains death. You must have seen many men die. Hundreds. Any policeman doing his job gets used to that. Up to a point. Yes, I've seen men die. There's one death I remember still if I wake in the small hours. One dead man I'll never forget. Why? Because I killed him, down and out, who died in a cheap hotel in Bremen a very long time ago. I'll never forget him. Of course. Louis Jeunet. Oh, that wasn't his real name. I know. You still blame yourself? If only I hadn't followed him. It was an impulse. I'd finished a job in Brussels, and it was a beautiful day. There was this scruffy little man in the corner of the cafe packing thousand-franc notes into a brown paper parcel. At least thirty of them. I had nothing better to do, so I followed him to the post office. Watched him write the address. Louis Jeunet, 18 Rue de la Roquette, Paris. You even remember the number? I remember everything about him. The parcel said... Printed matter. Printed matter. It's an odd way to describe 30,000 francs. Well, I kept on shadowing him. He went into a shop in the Rue Neuve and bought a cheap fiver suitcase. I bought another one, identical. Where did you think you were going? Well, God knows. It seemed a good idea at the time. I followed him to his hotel. I followed him to the station. We both caught the train to Amsterdam. And then the Amsterdam Bremen Express. Yes. I sat opposite him. I couldn't make him out. He was too nervous, too shabby to be an international crook. And yet, and yet there were those 30,000 francs. He left the compartment for a few minutes to go to the WC. I changed our cases over. Mine was full of old newspapers. When we got to Bremen, he spent a bit of time looking for a hotel. Couldn't find one cheap enough, I suppose. And then he booked into this dump near the station. I got the room next door. There was a communicating door. I watched him through the keyhole. He opened the suitcase, my suitcase. He stared at the old newspapers. He took a revolver from his pocket and shot himself through the mouth. Louis Genet, mechanic. 33 years of age, born Aubervilliers. That is all we know. May I see that passport, Inspector? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. Huh. No, we don't even know that. What? No, oh, this passport is a forgery. So, he's a man without a name. Uh, the press already have these details. They will be in tomorrow's papers. Oh, it doesn't matter. He may well have been using the name Louis Genet for some time. Look, I'd like to send copies of your photographs to Paris. When they're published, someone may recognize him. Come forward. Why was he in Bremen? Oh, an appointment, perhaps. This suitcase might tell us. Just a moment. An old suit. Hmm. Anything in the pockets? Hmm. Nothing. A suit and some dirty linen, that's all. But it's much too big. It couldn't have belonged to the dead man. No. Somebody else's suit. Now, why should he kill himself for that? The suit had not been worn for several years, at least six, maybe more. It had a name tab, Roger Moissel, Taylor, Rue Haute Sauvignère, Liège. It does not appear to be the property of the dead man who was too small to wear it. Unlike his own clothing, it had no grease spots, but various tears suggested that the wearer must have been in a struggle. Finally, the most important point. The suit was badly stained with blood, human blood. The man who wore it must have been drenched in it. Um, uh, Entschuldigung, 
Ja. Äh, dieser Mann, Louis Jeune, der Mann, der sich gestern Abend erschossen ah, ja, hat. Ja, ja, da drüben. Ja. Ah, danke. Ah. Did you know him? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're French? Yes. Are you? Um, I'm, I'm Belgian, but I've, um, I've lived in Bremen for years. Uh, no. No, I don't know him. But I read in the paper that a Frenchman had committed suicide in Bremen, so I thought I'd come to the mortuary and have a look. <laughs> um, are you um, fr from the police? Yes, police headquarters. And you came to Bremen on purpose? Well, no, no, of course, you couldn't have done it. It only happened last night. Do you know anyone here? No. Oh, well, perhaps I can be of some help to you. <laughs> May I offer you an aperitif? No, oh, well, thank you, Monsieur... Uh, Van Damme. Uh, Joseph Van Damme. Well, this is pleasant. <laughs> yes, do you know, I sometimes go for a month without having a chance to speak my own language. <laughs> My staff and even my secretary are German. Well, it's essential, you see, for business reasons. Oh, it can be a strain. Mm, I imagine it can. <laughs> yes. You, um, you wouldn't believe how much money these people are worth. I mean, that man at the corner table, for instance, he's selling a cargo of wool. He owns 30 or 40 ships. Yeah. <laughs> mm. This beer's good here, isn't it? Yeah, very good. Um, well, by the way, what do you make of this suicide? Was he a down and out? It's possible. Mm. Are you making inquiries about him? No, that's up to the Germans. Oh. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Well, I only asked because he was a Frenchman. Well, look, Inspector, it's almost midday. Will you um, go lunch with me? I, I'll have to invite you to a restaurant because I'm a bachelor, you see. But I, I try and see you had a decent meal. It was five o'clock before he let me go. I looked him up. He was born in Liège. He lived in Bremen three years, and he was doing well. How long did you stay in Bremen? Oh, I left for Paris late that night. I took both suitcases, one still holding the suit. When did you get back? The next afternoon. The Paris press had the story by then, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. So, there was a woman waiting for me in the Quai des Orfèvres. You knew this man? He was my husband. <laughs> Madame, sit down. Oh, yes, monsieur. When did you last see him? He left me two years ago. How long have you been married? Six years. And he was already called Jeunet? Of course. He was a driller in a workshop. You have a family? Mm. One little boy. We live with my mother. She has a herbalist shop in the Rue Picpus. We were very happy at first, but I always felt something was wrong. Why? Oh, it was almost as if Louis wasn't really our sort. As if it all got too much for him. He, he was very loving sometimes. He'd take me in his arms suddenly and hold me so close it hurt me and, and just as suddenly it, it pushed me away I... now, how did your mother get on with him she didn't like him he was too different was there anything he owned that he kept especially carefully how did you know yeah an old suit an old suit I see did he explain? No. I, I didn't understand it. I went to mend that suit once. It was torn, and, and he snatched it from me. He, he was angrier than he'd ever been. Was he often angry? M more and more as time went on. I, I think he was ill. He was suffering, I'm, I'm sure of it. After the baby was born, he started to drink. Or didn't he want the child? He was like a madman when I told him we were going to have a baby. Oh, but he loved our little boy. I, I know he did. Mm. His past, his family. I suppose he talked to you about them. 
Not much. Said he was an orphan. All I know is he, he was an educated man. Too educated for the work he did. The woman next door always came to him if she had a difficult letter to write. <laughs> Inspector, will he be brought back to France? I'm not sure. I know my mother wouldn't pay to bring back his body. <laughs> she wouldn't even give me the money to go and see him. So I don't well, don't to... worry, madame. I will arrange for your husband's body to be brought back home. Uh, this is 18 Rue de la Rocket. Yes. Uh, Louis Journey. No, uh, not here. Has he still got his room? Yes. Any letters for him? Uh, who wants to know? The police. Oh. Well, this package came yesterday. Hmm? Uh, from Brussels, yes. Did he get many parcels like this? Oh, now and then. Oh, what's he done? He seemed a quiet sort of chap. Where did he work? <laughs> Up the road, when he worked. Uh, what do you mean? Well, he was a drunk. I mean, he'd be all right for a few weeks, then he'd go on a jag upstairs and drink till he passed out, for days at a time. 28, 29, 30. It's all there. The 30,000 francs that started me off following him. Better give the numbers to the Belgian police. Maigret. Greens for you, Chief Inspector Maigret. Now put them through. Yeah? I own the Café de Paris, Rue Carnot Reims. It's about the man who shot himself in Bremen. I saw his picture in the paper. Oh, do you know him? Well, no, uh, not exactly. But he was in here six days ago. I remember him because I refused to serve him. He was drunk. Oh, thank you. I'd like to talk to you. I'll be in Reims tonight. Yes, yes, he was here. White as this tabletop. I didn't like the way he was staring. I told him I couldn't give him any more. He couldn't make a fuss. He had an old suitcase with him. And when he went out, it burst open and some old clothes fell onto the floor. Anyone else here? Yes, uh, those people that playing billiards at the third table. Uh, regulars. I better tell you the whole story, even though it doesn't sound very likely. The next day, a commercial traveller, another regular, told me he'd seen the drunk at one in the morning with Monsieur Belvoir. They both went into Monsieur Belvoir's house. Who's Monsieur Belvoir? Oh, uh, that's the tall, fair man playing billiards. Where does he live? Well, five minutes away. The Rue de Verden. He's vice chairman of the Banque de Crédit. Mm, I'm afraid I'm calling rather early. Oh, but no. I... The other gentlemen are here. They're expecting you. Oh. This way, sir. Was it? Monsieur? Uh, well, 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 fancy meeting you here. Monsieur Van Damme. Uh, yes. Well, why didn't you tell me in Bremen that you knew Belois? <laughs> You know, we, we could have travelled together. I had a, a telegram calling me to Paris on business, so I, I took the chance to come up here and say hello to Belois. Mm. Well, forgive me for disturbing you, <laughs> Monsieur Belois. I know you're expecting someone else. I am, but how did you know that? Well, your maid thought I was expected. I'm not, so somebody else must be. Who are you? The Chief Inspector Maigret, Police Headquarters. You may have seen me last night in the Café de Paris. I was making some inquiries about a case. Surely not the Bremen affair. That's precisely what it is. Monsieur Belois, would you look at this photograph? Hmm? Uh, did you bring that man here one night last week? No, I don't know. Or didn't he speak to you when you were coming back from the Café de Paris? What are you talking about? Uh, that evening a drunk left the Café de Paris shortly before you. Everyone noticed him. 
When you left, he came up to you in the street. Oh, I think I remember. He asked me for a light. And you came back here with him? Certainly not. I'm not in the habit of picking up tramps. Then you came home alone? Of course. Was the drunk the man in the photograph? I don't know. I didn't even look at him. Oh, well, then I'll apologise and go, Monsieur Belois. Oh, no, 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 just a minute. D don't rush off, Inspector. Um, uh, Belois has some splendid old liqueur brandy. But he and I have known each other for years. We were students together. Mm -hmm. In Liège? Um, yes. Yes, well, it's nearly ten years since we met, and uh, now he's married, he's got a little boy. <laughs> Haven't you finished with your suicide yet? Well, my inquiries have only just begun. Now, ah, this must be your other guest. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Is Monsieur Benoit? <laughs> it's, it's all right. I, I know the way. Hello. Were you... Were you expecting me? Jeff Lombard, friend. Chief Inspector Maigret, police headquarters. Oh, good. Good. Fine. It's another Belgian, Inspector. It's a real Belgian reunion. Uh, Lombard is the only one who still lives in Liège. <laughs> well, look, you missed the dinner I wanted to give you in Bremen. How about lunching with us later on? Mm, no, thank you. There are some things I have to do. I won't ask you if you know this man, Monsieur Lombard, oh. because that would be too extraordinary a piece of luck. I... I don't know him. Mm. When are you going back to Paris, Inspector? I don't know yet. Well, my apologies, gentlemen. Good morning. Ah, Inspector. Mm. <laughs> Lunching here all on your own. So that's what you meant by things to do. Monsieur Van Damme. <laughs> yes, let me get you a liqueur. <sighs> Um, oh, waiter? Sir? Uh, Armagnac, Inspector? No, thank you. Yes. Uh, two, um, uh, let's see, uh, 1867 Armagnac. Uh, and balloon glasses, please. <laughs> Look, I've, um, I've hired a car to take me back to Paris. Let me give you a lift. Well, thank you, but I... Uh, Chief Inspector Magray. Hmm? Paris is on the line for you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, certainly, certainly. It, it's settled, then. I'll, I'll give you a lift back. Uh, delighted to be of help. Magray speaking. Chief Inspector, we've heard from Brussels about those thousand-franc notes. Yes? They were issued to Louis Genet by the Banque Générale de Belgique in payment of a cheque signed Maurice Belois. It's very odd, meeting friends again after all these years. Mm, not for ten years, you say? Yes, yes. I don't want to run them down, but uh, that stifling provincial atmosphere... <laughs> Uh, mind you, Belois has done pretty well for himself. And Jeff Lombard? Oh, splendid chap. He wanted to be a painter, you know, but he, f he finished up a, a photo engraver. Married. Two children. One more on the way. <laughs> Hello. What's, what's wrong? Hmm? Oh, dear me. <laughs> Sorry, monsieur, we've got a puncture. Oh, that's a nuisance. I do apologise, Inspector. Hope you didn't want to get back to Paris urgently. No, that's all right. Hmm. How long will it take? Oh, about a quarter of an hour. Oh, that's not too bad. Well, well let's go out and stretch our legs. Yeah. What river would that be? Uh, the Marne. It's in flood. Hmm. The waters are very high. Yes. We don't make enough use of water power, you know. There's a, a, a dam in the Ukraine. Please look out, you nearly had me in. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you push me, you trying to kill me. Well, get up. Can't arrest me. Nobody saw I'll deny it. No, get back to the car. I'm taking you to police headquarters in Paris. Well, now, Monsieur Van Damme, how did you come to know the Bremen suicide? In what capacity am I here? You refuse to answer my question? I know the law as well as you. If you're charging me, I won't answer till I see the warrant for my arrest. And if you're not charging me, I don't have to say anything. Now, I told you, I'll deny everything that happened on the towpath. What have you got against me? 
You showed me a photograph of a man I don't know. He killed himself. Now, everyone knows that. Why are you following it up? There's been no crime. You're quite free. What? You're free. I may add I'm prepared to return your kindness and invite you to dinner. Oh. Um, can I go back to Bremen? Why not? What do I owe you for the car? <laughs> Nothing. Mm. Four. Four. Uh, Luca, that man who's just left me, follow him. To the ends of the earth, if necessary. Luca lost him, didn't he? Well, he couldn't help it. Then Dammer went straight to the station and caught the 619 to Liège. Oh, I cursed. I'd just decided to go there myself. But I was pretty sure Van Damme knew it. He seemed to be getting under my feet on purpose. At this stage, you had no idea what was coming. Well, as far as I can remember, none. I had to find all the answers. It was a kind of... Expiation? Mm. If you like, yes. <laughs> Van Damme's transformation was almost funny. There wasn't a trace left of the effusive, confident businessman. You know, all the time I was talking to him, I was making a list in my mind, an odd sort of list. What was it? The children. There seemed to be so many children involved. The little boy in the Rue Picpus, for one. Yes. Another little boy in Belvoir's house in Reims. And Jeff Lombard's two children in Liège. With a third on the way. Yes, third on the way. I had to go to Liège and see Lombard. But before I left Paris, I found out something. I recognised the photograph in the paper at once. Uh, but his name isn't Louis Jeunet. He's my brother, Jean. Hmm. And you are... Armand Lecoq d'Anville. Um, I've brought my papers. Yeah. Born in Liège, 35 years of age. Hmm. Mechanic, hmm? Uh, well, I, I, I'm a messenger now. Um, I've done a bit of everything. Including time, I see. Yes. I, I deserted from the army when I was serving abroad. I was only 16, and there was an amnesty later anyway. I haven't seen Jean for years. Uh, but that's him, all right. What was he like? Well, he was the steady sort. I'm the failure. I've been stupid. But Jean, he won a scholarship, went on to college and then university. I, I, I left home then. Have you heard from him recently? No. I was told he left Liège ten years ago. Are you quite sure he killed himself? Quite sure. Oh, he had such promise. I can't believe he went the same way as me. He had the same meek, worried eyes as his brother. He sat there, screwing up his cap in his hands, anxious and defeated. I could hardly bear to look at him. I took the night train and arrived in Liège at six in the morning. By nine o'clock, I was ringing the bell of a house in the Rue Hors Chateau. There was a zinc plaque on the wall. Central photo engraving. Jeff Lombard. Give it a push. It's open. Monsieur Lombard? He's um, in the office with the, with the gentleman. There, that way. First door on the left. Who is it? Oh. Uh, may I come in? Ah, good morning, Monsieur Van Damme. I thought I might find you here. Morning. What can I do for you? Well, I just want a little information, Monsieur Lombard. I'm sorry to disturb you. I'd like to know if a few years ago you knew a certain Jean Lecoq d'Anville. Well? I, I think I've heard the name before. He's from Liège, isn't he? Yes. I don't know what became of him so long ago. Jeff! Quick! Quick, Jeff! What? It's, it's arrived! What? A girl! Hurry! Uh, excuse me? Yeah, of course. We were left alone, and Dama lit a cigar, tried to ignore me. I ignored him with less effort. The walls of that office 
were pretty remarkable. The Hanging Men. Yes, The Hanging Men. It comes straight out of Francois Villon. Mm. Ballad of the Hanging Men. There was a quotation from it written under one of the drawings. There must have been hundreds of them. Sketches, paintings, watercolours. And nearly all were variations on the same subject. A hanged man. One swung from a gibbet where an enormous crow perched and brooded. There was a forest landscape with a hangman swinging from the branch of every tree. Some of the men were in 16th century costume. There was one hanged lunatic in top hat and tail swinging from a lamppost. But most of them hung from a church steeple. And the church was always the same. You must forgive me. I've just had a daughter. I'm so sorry to leave you. No, I had plenty to look at. Your paintings? Oh, youthful indiscretions. They're very bad. But at the time I thought I'd be a great artist. Uh, the church, is it in Liège? It's been gone for seven years. It was demolished to build a new one. What was its name? The Church of saint Folia. The new one has the same name. Were you married when you painted these? Oh, no, I was 19 and studying at the academy. It was ten years ago. Will you have a drink? Oh. Yes. Oh. Got some gin here. Mm. We must drink my daughter's health. Mm. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh. Inspector. Thank you. Joseph. Yes, thank well, you. to your daughter. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> forgive me for coming back to business, but you said you knew Jean Lecoq d'Anville. A casual acquaintance, nothing more. I'm sorry, I can't help you further. The suit had not been worn for several years. At least six, maybe more. It's nearly ten years since we last met. And now he's married and got a little boy. I was told he left Liège ten years ago. I was 19 and studying at the academy. It was ten years ago. These are the files you wanted, Inspector? Mm, all the ten-year-old issues of the paper. Hmm? Actually, I brought you all the copies of the Mers News, nine, ten, and eleven years old. Yes. I hope you find what you want. Thank you. Hmm. That's odd. Something wrong? Oh, look, these pages have been torn out. How extraordinary. February the 15th, all the news for that day is gone. Did anyone call this morning before me? Well, uh, yes. Who? Only Monsieur Van Damme. You're the second visitor asking to see the police reports in 24 hours. Who else has been here? Oh, a uh, chap from here who's done all right for himself abroad. Joseph Van Damme? Oh, no. But he couldn't find what he wanted. No. Oh. Oh. There's a report missing. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, let me have a look. Oh, you're quite right. There's no report 240. Well, I'm damned. I should like to see the town clerk. It's urgent. Certainly, Chief Inspector. Ah, oh, good morning, Monsieur Van Damme. Can I help you? Um, it's nothing. I'll I'll come back. This way, Chief Inspector, maybe. The mayor's copies of the police report. Thank God I got here first, Holmes. That demo must be cursing. Ah, February the 15th. Hmm. Hmm. Police Constable Lacasse of Number 6 Division was going on duty at 6 o'clock this morning when he observed a body hanging from the door knocker of the main door to the church of saint Folion. The dead man was Emile Klein, a house painter, 20 years of age, living at number 7, Rue Potonnoir. Yes, can I help you? Hmm, did someone called Klein once live here? Yeah, upstairs over the workshop. First floor, you can't miss it, it's the only door. A few steps up, the banisters were missing. There was no light, and I could barely see. At the top, I struck a match. 
The door had no lock or handle. It was held to by a string tied to a rusty nail. I felt for my revolver and pushed open the door. I was dazzled by light streaming through a broken stained glass window. On the floor were new unfinished chairs, glue, broken saws and other bits and pieces from the workshop. But there were other things too. An incomplete skeleton had been flung down on an old mattress. There was a Bible with a damaged cover. And on the wall there was a painted slogan. The Companions of the Apocalypse. And there, in the corner, in the middle of all this rubbish, was that well-shaved, well-dressed businessman from Bremen, Joseph Van Damme. Well, we were bound to end up here, weren't we? Uh, how much? Hmm? What do you mean? F Fifty thousand francs. Hundred. Two hundred thousand. Well, there's still time. You're not on official business. Here, give me a month, Inspector, please. In other words, it happened in December. Hmm? What? It's November now. In February, it'll be ten years since Klein hanged himself. But you're only asking for a month. I don't understand. Oh, you understand all right. If it were Klein's death that was worrying you. If, for instance, he'd been murdered, the time limit wouldn't come into force till February, ten years after his death. But you're only asking for a month. So it happened in December. You won't find anything. And why are you so frightened? Good evening, Monsieur Belois. You're alone. Jeff's coming. How is he? Like a madman. I tried to calm him down, but he got away. Has he got a gun? Did you all agree to offer me money? Yes, I see you did. And if I refused it, what were you going to do? Jeff! Drop that gun! No! Go away, damn you! Go away! Drop it! Tell me about it. Destroyed. In a few days. It took me ten years to build up my life. I married. I worked to give my family a decent life. You saw it, but you didn't see how I'd worked, how I'd tried. Now it's all gone. The Companions of the Apocalypse. Was that the name of your gang? Yes. Uh, tell me what happened ten years ago. I was at the academy. So was little Emil Klein. We all fancied ourselves in those days. Big hats, flowing cravats. We all thought we were Rembrandt. There were six of us. The others were students. Belois, Van Damme. And Lecoq d'Anville. Oh, that's only five. The sixth was Mortier. Who was Mortier? His father owned a butcher's shop. He had more money than the rest of us. We were all about twenty. Van Damme was the oldest of us. He was twenty-two. We used to talk our heads off and drink till we felt we were real geniuses. We used to plan the future. Lecoq d'Anville was to be a Tolstoy. Van Damme was to revolutionise political thought. We were all poets, painters, future heads of state. We drank our wine from that skull. Look at us now. I'm in business. Belois in a bank. Joseph's a photo engraver. Klein hanged himself on a church door. Lecoq shot himself in Bremen. And Mortier? Mortier was never really one of us. Why? Oh, he was rich and he was mean. He didn't drink, and when we got drunk he looked disgusted. He came here out of sheer curiosity. I think he loathed us, really. 
and we loathed him. When Klein got drunk, he used to attack Mortier. And what was Mortier's reaction? Contempt. I can't remember when we first began to talk about death. Somebody quoted the Mandarin problem. You know, if all you had to do was press a button and kill a rich Mandarin in China to become his heir, would you do it? It was just before Christmas. We had to be different, and we seized on this new idea. What is death, after all? If life's nothing but chance, a skin disease on the Earth's crust... Would you dare kill? When Klein was drunk, he yelled yes. We felt we were on the brink of the abyss. But it was all just talk. Nobody got killed that night. Then when? Christmas Eve. We'd been drinking and singing. We were all half tight. Klein, the worst of the lot. <laughs> Listen, all of you! L listen to me! Shut up, Emil! Do you think I could kill? <laughs> Let's get some more bottles. Good idea! You, you don't believe me! You, you don't think I could? I want another drink. Somebody's got to go out and get it! Oh, who's drinking? Oh, Mortier! Good God, what a mess! Oh. Go and get us some drink. Ah, well, you're yeah. drunk already, my friend. Who cares? Get us some more drink, damn you. I simply came in to say hello. You came to have a look. Yes. Uh, now you can fetch us some bottles. Yeah. You're yeah. a drunken pig, Klein. So? The pig says fetch some more bottles. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you're good for, parasite. <laughs> oh, you're being a bore. It was much more amusing with the stuffy crowd I left at home. Oh, oh, oh. Fetch oh, us oh, some oh, drink. Oh, yes. Some drink! Go get away, you wretched little sot! <laughs> hey, watch out! He's got a knife! <laughs> oh, my God! Blood was pouring from a hole in Mortier's shirt front. But he wouldn't die. And he had a gun in his pocket. He was trying to get at it. Someone tried to grab the gun. He slipped in the blood and they rolled together on the floor. The other fellow must have gripped Mortier's throat. In any case, he hadn't long to live. I got in an awful mess. Then it was you? Yes. I had my hands around his throat. I wore that suit. What did you do with the body? The Meuse was in flood. We threw it in the river and saw it swept away. It was never found. People thought Mortier had run away. Klein wanted to give himself up. We had to stop him. Two months later, he killed himself. The suit? Van Damme went and fetched me some clothes. I left the suit in the studio. Did you all meet again? No. One by one we left Liège, all except the ship. I stayed on. Drawing hanged men and church steeples. When did you see Lecoq again? Two years ago. It was very unexpected. He turned up at the house. With the suit. To blackmail you? Yes, but not in the usual way. He demanded money, but he never used the notes. He burned them. Can you understand that? He burned them. He thought I'd forgotten, but he was wrong. I simply wanted to live. Had he changed? In many ways, no. He had stayed still. But his life had changed. He told me he hadn't opened a book since it happened. He'd changed his name. He'd become a manual worker. He'd married. He said he adored his wife. But he'd left her. Because when he was with her, he felt he was stealing. Stealing what? Happiness. It started as a game. A kid's game. But it wrecked our lives. I didn't understand at first why he'd come. And then I found out. He looked at my house, my family... My bank. He thought it his duty to destroy it all. He was the avenging angel. He went from one to another of us with that old suit. My house is mortgaged. My wife's dowry is gone. She doesn't know, but there isn't a penny left. And he burned the money. He burned it. Then the other day, Van Damme wired us that he was dead. We all arranged to meet. And then you walked in. Ten years ago... Immediately after the thing, I could have accepted it. But ten years of life, of effort, of struggle. And now I've got a wife and children. I think I could have pushed you into the Marne, too. Because in less than a month, in 24 days, the time limit expires. And we're safe. It's getting dark. I must go. What? 
I'm expected in Paris. Goodbye, gentlemen. So you let them go? I let them go. There were five children involved. Mm. Ah, you know...